Syrian refugees have turned Lesbos into a war zone. Residents claim as migrants chant FU at Hungarian police amid fears ISIS using the crisis to enter Europe. Uh, that came out today in the Daily Mail. And uh, it's just amazing. What do you make of that? That they're actually now there. There's a small trickle, Leanne, going into some of these uh, well off uh, high society. Uh, not I guess there, there's no wars going on in any of those countries at this point other than the oppression of their citizens. Leah right. McAdoo, what do you make of that? The economic war that's being waged against the citizenry there. Um, it's just frightening to me. I mean, you see those, the lifeboats that are sinking with all those people on board. I mean, that's the perfect metaphor for countries that can't afford to bring in more people. Or, you know, countries like Hungary, they say, well, we're a Christian foundation. So if we bring a lot of people in who are going to fundamentally change our society, you're in a sinking lifeboat. It's just frightening. And meanwhile, you have, and this came out in the Washington Times, which I'm surprised they report on it. Agents say 20% of illegals caught at border have criminal records. So what Donald Trump was saying is actually... Partially correct. 20% of, of the ones that they catch, at least. And and we've talked to border agents. We've sent our guys down there. And they say they, they think they catch about half of the people that come across illegally. So you've got maybe 40%, maybe even larger numbers of people that aren't being caught that are criminals. We shot that. That's a picture that um, our camera guy, Josh Owens, and Joe Biggs, when they were down at the border, shot that of those guys Coming across the border, dumping in what looks like 50 kilo uh, barrel uh, uh, batches wrapped up into a car. That car takes off right in broad daylight. And the border agents that were there leave five minutes before the shipment arrives. Very coincidental. And this political correctness goes all the way. How you're not allowed to say anything bad about the migrants. You're going to be criticized. Well, I think we should bring all this stuff out, that ISIS is using this as a smokescreen to inner countries. And no, we're not being racist about it. And maybe some of these Mideastern countries that are causing the problem, okay, they're actually causing the problem. Let's look at this last clip. This is how the Saudi border is set up. Now, they want to fund all these radical Islamic movements, but then they don't want to take any of the fallout. So here's that clip. Saudis are putting up a 900 kilometer razor wire fence on the border with Iraq. There are also underground movement sensors capable of triggering silent alarms. The issue here is very clear that the Gulf countries are more interested in funding armed groups uh, in Syria rather than assist the Syrian people, uh, invite them to live in the Gulf instead of having them travel uh, in the midst of seas and, and uh, in the dangers that we, we see very clearly. So uh, I want to give kudos to RT for reporting on that and actually telling what's really going on. That's what we're trying to do here at Infowars.com. What do you think of that border? Uh, they actually setting up a fence, but they have a, a double, a, a dual barrier with the motion sensors, which I think we went and interviewed a local rancher out in Arizona who set up the same type of system with motion sensors that actually pop drones out into the sky so you can get a bird's eye view. That, that's easily a system with the technology we have here. We could put a lot of people to work actually building a system like that just to track our border, not to necessarily go in and, and kill people who are crossing the border, but to see who's coming in, find out where they're going, and then bring people in. You know, the ones that really need help, let's help them. The ones that don't need help, let's get them back into their country and get them out of our country. Right, well, they just wanna create the terrorists. And frankly, they're, they're building that fence around their country because they know that they're the number one target. Yeah, the they're, chickens are going to come home to roost at some right. point, so they're stopping that. They know that they're guilty, which is why they want to uh, to close that off. Um, now, uh, it was late last, uh, it was late August, I actually went and shot some footage of UT removing the Jefferson Davis statue along with uh, Woodrow Wilson, removing that from UT. And this is how far the political correctness has gone here, because Jefferson Davis was head of the Confederacy. He was elected to be the leader of the Confederacy, and at one time... You know, he did own slaves. And then you got Woodrow Wilson, who's he was a supporter of the Klan, created the Federal Reserve, which is essentially created, turned us all into debt slaves. So we have that. But John Bowne, we played a report last night on the nightly news where John Bowne points out that here's a Confederate statue that nobody's going to remove. Nobody's going to take down. And it's because he is part of the in crowd, and that's Albert Pike. So uh, if you guys have that video queued up, let's go to it, and then Leanne will get your comments on it.
bigs ready Recently, to go on? The so University can... of Texas pulled the Jefferson Davis statue from its campus because of a growing irrational fear of American history. On the northwest axis of 3rd and D in the nation's capital sits the Albert Pike statue, dedicated to the leader of the southern jurisdiction of the Scottish Rite, a title Pike held for 32 years. He was also a Confederate brigadier general. He was also the chief judicial officer and Arkansas Grand Dragon of the newly formed Ku Klux Klan. This is the only statue in Washington, D.C. commemorating a Confederate soldier, much less a founding member of the Klan. In fact, Pike was said to have owned a bracelet that allowed him perpetual communication with Lucifer himself. So if the Confederate flag is being denounced and Jefferson Davis and other Confederate monuments are under consideration for removal, why does this statue still remain? Simple. Pike is highly revered by the very occultic groups in control of the puppet government installed in Washington, D.C. His 1871 letter to Illuminati Mafia founder Giuseppe Mazzini predicts a succession of three world wars, a game plan followed to a T by the global elite. It was Pike that wrote the rituals that would create a secret society within a secret society, the 33rd Degree. The 33rd degree would serve as a continuation of the Luciferian goals established by an older order known as the Order of the Palladium. All Master Masons brought into the higher degrees would have to take orders from higher Masons. This long list of initiates includes presidents, Supreme Court justices, and military leaders. It was Pike and Illuminati conspirators that infiltrated the world of Freemasonry, armed with a doctrine to establish a one-world order. These conspirators, such as Lord Henry Palmerston of England and Otto von Bismarck of Germany, built global hubs for the Illuminati, and these hubs, known as the Supreme Councils of the Scottish Rite, like the one located at 1733 16th Street Northwest in Washington, D.C., have been in operation ever since. Washington, D.C. itself is reputed to have been designed to represent a pentagram in the Masonic Square and Compass, which would add to the confusing manner in which the streets of the District of Criminals are set up. Masons have long argued that Pike was not a member or founding father of the Klan. However, the 1905 publication, Ku Klux Klan, Its Origin, Growth, and Disbandment by J.C. Lester and D.L. Wilson clearly lists Albert Pike as one of its founding members. This book was intent on glorifying the Klan and its origins, hardly an effort to spread misinformation. If awareness grows, the very people behind the liberal agenda to spread political correctness while abandoning our ugly American history will have clumsily uncovered a nest of treasonous activity and Luciferian dogma exposed in the light of day. Albert Pike issued this statement to the 23 Supreme Councils of the world. We worship a God, but it is the God one adores without superstition to you. Sovereign Grand Instructors General, we say this, that you may repeat it to the brethren of the 32nd, 31st, and 30th degrees. The Masonic religion should be, by all of us initiates of the high degrees, maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. Albert Pike, July 14th, 1889. John Bound for Infowars.com. media as they're promoting their race war. You're not going to see him talk about the Albert Pike statue and how it needs to be brought down and why. Here's a guy that was uh, part of the Confederacy. Uh, he also helped found the Ku Klux Klan, which people try to dismiss. And he was a 33rd degree Mason. But uh, you're not going to hear about that anywhere else but here at Infowars.com. Leanne, what do you make of that? Well, kudos to John Bowne. He is always <laughs> coming with the fire on his reports. But that's what we see, they'll kind of throw us a bone and say, oh, well, they're really upset about those Confederate statues. So we'll take these down and those down. But they don't get to the root of the problem. And we've the real stated power. that from the beginning. Like, mm -hmm. it's just a piece of cloth that's not going to get to the root. Same with this Freddie Gray payout. They just decided, you know, $6.4 million going to the family. And that's because they didn't want more riots if a jury decided, you know, something the people weren't happy with. And that's because you're racist against one of the founders of the Klan, Albert Pike. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Cole Southern Poverty Law Center. Right. We found a racist.
<laughs> yeah, it, it, it's just amazing. You won't even hear the name Albert Pike mentioned in any of those Confederate generals that they want to take down. You, you'll never even hear about him. And if you do, it won't be talking about how he was part of the Klan and, and part of the uh, uh, Confederacy and a Masonic 33rd degree Mason, probably higher than that. Yeah. And how he, he says that in, his, in his quote there, he wants everybody to follow the Luciferian doctrine. Well, it just goes to show you these dark oppressors that are ruling our planet and why it's so hard to affect change and to get people to wake up and why we're programmed daily, television, radio, everything. I mean, there are dark forces that have been in place for a really long time. Totally agree. Hey, now this next segment, uh, you're actually going to go on out and get ready for the news. I think you're helping Jakari with a couple of reports. Uh, I'm going to have Joe Biggs sit in here. He's going to be modeling the Hillary for a prison T-shirt <laughs> and, and talk about his, the the reaction he got. He said he's worn it out a couple times. And he's got a, a, some amazing stories of what happens when you put the truth out there in people's faces. And I also want to remind everyone out there, those of you, that one person who gets the Hillary for prison T-shirt autographed by Hillary Clinton, you get video of it, put it up on YouTube, send it to us. And I'm personally going to give you $100. I am not, I am not superly rich. I got, <laughs> I got kids that take all my money and, uh, and spend it. So, I'll, But I will give you $100, definitely. And uh, if Alex wants to match that or, or increase that, that's his prerogative. But me personally, this is what I'm saying I will do. Putting my money where my mouth is. I want to see her in prison. I want to see her sign that shirt. I want to see her pose in a picture with it because she doesn't really read it. Uh, because our minds are so programmed to just see certain things. So she's going to see that and see Hillary for president 2016. Awesome. Because prison <laughs> and president start with a P. So I have no idea. I'm going to sign that. Thank you for showing up. And everyone exactly. that buys a shirt, get a picture of yourself in it and then tag her on Twitter and everything. Just Yeah. Let's all show our support <laughs> for Hillary and where we think she should go. I still think, <laughs> you know, people were debating today that now that Joe Biden's going to come in, he's going to take it. And Fox News is bowing down to Joe mm -hmm. Biden, how he's going to be the savior. And nah, I think yeah. Joe's just another ringer to be thrown in to take, to take away the, uh, the eye of Sauron on Hillary. But we're looking <laughs> at Hillary right now. We know what she's up to. So uh, we'll be back. Our final segment of InfoWars.com, The Alex Jones Show, Overdrive. It's Rob Dew hosting. Final segment of The Alex Jones Show. This is the Overdrive Hour. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. I wanted to say 2 p.m., but now we're doing that extra hour overdrive. 3 p.m. Central, and then back from 4 to 6 on Sunday. Tonight, we got the nightly news at 7 p.m. Jakari Jackson's going to be hosting. So I want to show you a, a quick article here from Food Babe. Food Babe, the shocking email from Monsanto. Why I am submitting an FOIA request there on the computer. Um, she She's discovered some emails of this guy who's been attacking her consistently out on, on the web. Anytime she puts something up, a man named Kevin Folta is always attacking her from a, a system of academia. And... Um, he is chair of the Horticultural Department of the University of Florida. And it's come out that he was getting 20, he got a $25,000 grant right there from Monsanto and unrestricted money. And uh, so he's out there promoting that. And in fact, he even says in a uh, an email to them, I'm grateful for this opportunity and promise a solid return on investment. Volta wrote after receiving a $25,000 check. But that's that's just a small if you think $25,000 is the end of what Monsanto is, it goes a lot deeper than that. So check out the, the article on InfoWars. And then also there's an article on Independent Science News, The Puppet Masters of Academia, What the New York Times Left Out. Now, finishing up here, I want to go to Joe Biggs. Let's get a shot of Joe Biggs wearing that Hillary for Prison 2016 t-shirt. Joe, I'm going to give you the floor. Tell me about those stories, especially about the one where you sat down at the bar and the guy wanted to come punch you out. <laughs> Well, this Sunday I went out, Sunday fun day, since we didn't have to do anything on Monday. And I decided to wear this shirt out, kind of promote it, see what kind of vibe I got from the people in Austin with this shirt. And this is a very liberal town. And surprisingly, I probably spent hours giving high fives, taking pictures with people. People love this shirt. We put up a new picture today on uh, the Alex Jones Twitter, on different uh, our Facebooks and all that. Everyone loves it. Now, Sunday when I was out, I went to this one bar. I'm sitting down at a, uh, to order a drink. And I'm up there for about 20 minutes waiting because the bar staff is actually having a discussion about whether or not they should come over and serve me because they thought it said Hillary for president. 
So I'm sitting here and the bartender finally walks over and he goes, you know what?